I believe him. I believe I believe him. Kids have to know that they are valuable as people first. I am valuable. I am valuable. I am valuable. At some point, you are going yeah. to teach your team those three instructions. So once they establish that they are in control of their value, we go to number two. They work as a team. When you're a valuable person, now you have something to offer a team. Does it look like an inch over here? Does that look like an inch? Pull it hard. You got it. Pull it, pull it, pull it. We are bringing hovercrafts into fifth grade classrooms, and we are showing kids how to build, test, and ride hovercrafts. This morning you solved a lot of problems to get this thing built. I didn't build it. I didn't solve the problems. Who solved the problems? Nice job. Now we're going to see if this thing actually works. Move on! The air from under made it, the oxygen like come out. Makes it lift because all the pressure from it. For question four, we need to observe the balance. I want to know, is it in balance, out of balance, and why? It's about a lot more than just STEM. Um, our kids are getting life lessons about how to work with a team, about how to be a team leader, how to be a good follower, how to share ideas, how not to be the person to give all the answers. They're getting um, life lessons about how frustrating it can be to work on a team, but also the benefits therein. Watch for balance, operators in three, two, one. When I had to like straighten it up, it out. So you never know. Yeah, but it was kind of shaky and it would get yeah. off balance. The very first thing actually has nothing to do with hovercrafts. We really want them to understand their value as people. And so when they understand their value as people, they can work as a team. I think it's easier if each person gets their own task. Once I step into a team and we start communicating as a team together, we have to listen. I've colored it while the team help to put it up. When we listen to each other, then we can form the best way forward. And Xavier attached it. And then have a chance of success. That's kind of the four steps that we go through. It's eventually going to start floating off of the uh, ground. I'm valuable. Then we're going to work as a team and communicate. And then we're going to do our best to move forward regardless of what happens. My husband used to be a fifth and sixth grade math and science teacher, and he realized that kids work best in project-based environments. Do you understand the safety instructions? Yes! Do you understand and he couldn't really do that inside the context of a normal classroom, and so he started uh, just experimenting with what it would be like to teach kids how to do something uh, focused on one job, but incorporating all the different parts alongside of it in the process. Now, we're going to move shift from math class this morning into science class. So I learned really quickly this morning that it's about a heck of a lot more than just the hovercraft, and I'm really grateful for the experience for our students. Come away with me, come, let's go away to be on a new adventure for two. We can fly across the ocean or take a train together. I don't care as long as it's beside you. Take a road trip in a car, we'll get lost and go too far While on the beaches we will watch the sunrise And if we've done, there's all to do I'll just sit and stare into your loving face Graced with those beautiful eyes I have fallen madly in love You're the only one I think the world of And I will stay true So we 
really want them to know that they're valuable and that they have something to contribute to the world around them um, and that they had fun doing it. They work as a team and we talk about all of this stuff in today just to show them that people that are different from you are good. <laughs> they got a different perspective on the world. Helps you solve problems faster. Doesn't hinder you, it helps you. So they got to learn things about STEM and build something awesome and in the process they maybe learned about themselves. I saw a video of this project. I don't remember where. It had to be on social media somewhere. And I said, man, what an exciting event. What a cool project. I want my kids to be able to do this at school. So then I wrote a grant through the Foundation for Leon County Schools, who does amazing work to be able to bring things like this to our schools for all children. And we got awarded the grant. The whole hovercraft thing is literally a a way to get kids excited about those four things that they can take the rest of their lives. They might not ever touch a hovercraft or build a hovercraft for the rest of their life, but they're gonna remember, man, I'm valuable. And man, it was hard to work as a team. And man, it's hard to talk to a team people that are different than I am, but we succeeded. And we built this thing that we flew across the gym with zero adult help and zero books and zero grades, nothing. They can quit anytime they want to. Not a single kid has come to me and said they quit. They're building this aircraft that they're flying on their own and it, it just ignites them. So whether they use it again the rest of their life in terms of a hovercraft doesn't matter. It's do you get the soft skills that you can take into your adulthood and then be successful as an adult? You know, they're trying to, I'm trying to build in those soft skills as a kid now so they can carry it on as an adult. That's, that's my main goal. Well, we have the privilege of being able to travel all over the country. We serve about 120 schools a year and we homeschool our kids while we do it. The fifth grade kid in me got my value from other kids. And kids are mean. We all know this because we've all been in fifth grade before. So when a kid makes fun of you, you feel bad. Why? Because you get your value from that kid. I'm trying to teach them to fight that. I'm trying to teach them to say um, that other person might call you stupid or ugly or fat or a moron or whatever. They can Call me whatever you want to. I'm a valuable person. But by the way, bullies, you're valuable too. If you ever want to disarm a bully, just tell a bully that they're valuable. You're showing your own confidence and then you're imbuing into them value as well to help them recognize it. Maybe they'll stop bullying people. So I've been able to kind of stand on the side and be a coach to some of the team leaders as well because there have been some frustrations. And we were warned this morning from the Hovercraft team that there will be some tears. And you hear that and you're thinking, oh my goodness. But this has been the best experience for our kids. They have persevered through all of their frustration and what's going to happen towards the end of the day when they build those crafts and they're going to be able to ride it. They're going to be so proud of themselves and the work that they did together to achieve their common goal. Rich or poor, everybody struggles with the same exact issues that we go through in there. So you can take any class of people, rich or poor or black or white or brown, or you take single parent households, whatever. I don't care what it is. Every kid struggles with the same thing in there. there it's, it's fascinating that I've, I've seen the same struggles with ultra wealthy and ultra poor and every color on the spectrum. Every kid is virtually the same when they approach a problem, but then it's fun to see them work as a team to get out of that problem. So they're working as a team with people that are different colors. They're working as a team with people of different incomes. Parents have different incomes. They're working as a team with single parent households, double parent households. They work as a team. And we talk about all of this stuff in today just to show them that people that are different from you are good because <laughs> they got a different perspective on the world. Helps you solve problems faster. Doesn't hinder you, it helps you. <laughs> Early on, you know, probably high school, college, I realized I was good at communicating with kids and mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but there's some, I have a passion for watching them learn. I like being a part of people's learning. And so if I can be one little cog, one little gear in their life that said, Hey, Mr. Clean, help me learn this. And they moved on to Denver and said, okay, Denver, help me learn this. And then they move on. If I'm one little cog, I'm satisfied. I can die a happy person. I don't have to be the end all be all teacher. I never will be, but if I can be one little cog, I just love watching kids learn. It's just, it's, it's a, a gift mix, a talent I've been given and I just want to use it for them.